Russian invasion of Ukraine now and we are following the story of a Russian general identified as Ivan Popov saying he was dismissed as a commander after telling the military leadership about the dire situation at the front in Ukraine where he said Russian soldiers had been stabbed in the back by the failings of the top military brass. Popov was commander of the 58th Combined Arms Army. He said in a voice message published by Russian lawmaker Andrei Gurulov that he had been dismissed after telling the truth to the top brass about the situation at the front. Popov, who commanded Russian units in southern Ukraine, explicitly raised the debts of Russian soldiers from Ukrainian artillery and said the army lacked proper counter-artillery systems and reconnaissance of enemy artillery. There was no immediate comment from the Defence Ministry and Reuters was unable to independently verify the authenticity of the voice message. The lawmaker is a hardline former army commander who regularly appears on state television. Such public criticism of Russia's military leadership from a battle-hardened general less than three weeks since the Wagner mutiny indicates a level of discontent within the Russian army as it fights the biggest land war in Europe since World War II. In the meantime, one person has died following a drone attack in the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, triggering fires and falling debris in several districts. It was a third consecutive night of attacks in and around the Ukrainian capital. Mayor Vatily Klitschko, writing on Telegram, said the body of one resident was recovered when emergency services put out a fire in the capital's historic Podil district. Mr. Klitschko reported a fire in an apartment building there and said two people were injured when debris damaged one story of an apartment building in Donetsky district in the east of the city. The Ukrainian Air Force said air defenses shot down all 20 drones launched by Russia to attack Kyiv and the surrounding region. And after the role of unmanned aerial vehicles in the Ukraine war expanded dramatically since Russia invaded 16 months ago, attention is turning to ground drones, which developers say could be the next frontier in military innovation. Among the Ukrainian engineers working in the sector is 22-year-old Yevhen Natok, who said he had already supplied several dozen remote-controlled ground vehicles for the armed forces. In a recent demonstration, a small green machine with chunky wheels and a landmine strapped to its back moves through long grass almost undetected. As more experimental technologies are introduced onto the battlefield, small-scale engineers like Natuk are hoping to influence the war's outcome with unmanned ground vehicles, UGVs, um, that carry weapons and explosives or conduct reconnaissance. Russia, too, has invested in UGVs, including combat robots, and Ukraine wants to counter that, as it has done in the aerial drone sphere, by encouraging innovation among small enterprises. Ukrainian armed forces have released this video, which it said shows a Russian ammunition depot being destroyed by artillery fire near Bakhmut. Video published the Telegram messaging app showed multiple strikes in the area of road and field covered with explosion craters. The Reuters was not able to independently verify the location or the date the video was filmed. A spokesperson for the Eastern Military Command said Ukraine had enjoyed partial success on the southern flanks of the shattered eastern city and that Ukrainian troops held the strategic initiative there. Let's bring in viewers Anna Chanikova, who is in Kyiv Light for us. Hi, Anna. We begin with the attack in Kyiv. Uh, talk to us about that. What's going on? Uh, good evening. Yeah, it was another sleepless night for the for, for Kyiv citizens, for the capital. Uh, four districts were affected by the attack. Uh, as you correctly said, 20 drones were launched, 20 were destroyed. That was confirmed by uh, the Ukrainian air defense. It was quite loud, I should say, um, and... Uh, couple of districts uh, heard the uh, the uh, work of the air defense. Uh, for instance, my district where I live um, also was quite loud. Uh, a lot of uh, drones were destroyed in, in the area around. Um, 
uh, the attack was happening at around two o'clock in the morning, uh, meaning people were sleeping. So people were uh, uh, were woke up by these explosions and by the air raid siren. Um, and uh, for around an hour, um, it was an intensive uh, intensive work of the air defense. It was uh, it was suggested to everyone to be in the shelters, of course. Uh, unfortunately, th- there is a victim um, in Kiev uh, after. The after tonight and uh, also a couple of people were hospitalized and and some people unfortunately unfortunately lost their property as uh, some um, apartments were uh, heavily damaged by the debris uh, of the of the drones uh, in general um, as usual, Kiev citizens woke up the next morning, like this morning, and continued their life. Uh, and um, I cannot say that it's anything, you know, like anything extraordinary happening. Uh, but I should say also that in this past uh, last month, it was probably the most loud night uh, in Kiev. And, you know, Anna, would you say that perhaps, you know, civilians are being targeted with this hitting apartment buildings? Um, Would you also say that uh, the attacks have sort of intensified in the last few days or that they just pick up following the NATO meeting in Lithuania? Um, In terms of targeting, uh, it's really difficult to say um, for now, what was the main target? It looks like that uh, there were different targets because a lot of drones were destroyed uh, around residential buildings, meaning that uh, their um, the direction of their uh, of, of their targets were around residential areas. So we can suggest that uh, some targets uh, apparently were somewhere around uh, residential areas. But uh, again, uh, we're talking about debris, so no, none of the drones uh, reached uh, their real destination. Uh, and uh, uh, but always, uh, when we when we look at this uh, at such kind of attacks, uh, always civilians are under very uh, very high risk because even if the target is not. Uh, a particular residential building, a uh, residential building would be uh, at the highest risk because of the debris uh, from this, uh, from the drone or missile, depending on what kind of attack is that. In terms of, in terms of intensifying uh, of attacks, I cannot say it's, it's particularly somehow intensified due to NATO summit. Uh, it just, uh, it was a period in, in the month of May when Kyiv was attacked almost every night. Then in June, uh, most of attacks were happening in the west part of the country or south and south part of the country. Uh, but uh, I should say that south and east were always uh, under quite intensive uh, attacks, uh, no matter which month is that. And now uh, Kyiv is again uh, targeted. So I don't really think this is somehow has any connection with uh, <clears throat> with NATO summit, at least it doesn't really, you know, look like that. Talk to us about the Ukraine's counteroffensive and, you know, the fighting. Is it still ongoing in Bakhmut? Uh, according to the latest uh, information we have from Bakhmut and areas surrounding Bakhmut, uh, Ukrainian forces had certain success, um, let's say, in the beginning of the week, I think it was this latest update, official update at least, um, from the uh, from the Ministry of, uh, of Defense of Ukraine. And uh, the latest information was that Ukrainian forces had taken control of certain uh, points uh, in the outskirts of Bakhmut, uh, meaning that they have fire control of the city and of the Russian positions, uh, particular positions. And uh, this is what was reported, at least by the Ukrainian military officials. Uh, As of then, uh, there is no much uh, official reports from Bakhmut uh, and neither about uh, Ukrainian advance nor about Russian success. So we don't really, um, for the moment, uh, we cannot really say that a certain uh, that situation has changed somehow, either 
for Ukrainians or for Russian forces. Um, so for the moment, uh, we we should consider that situation is really tough. It remains tough, so it doesn't matter uh, who can... Uh, I mean, s- certain success that Ukrainian forces had in the past weeks uh, definitely made uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, positive uh, outcomes for Ukrainian forces in that area, and we can even see um, the uh, liberation of the territories in that area. But it doesn't mean that uh, situation is uh, is easier in the in the area. So it remains really difficult, and uh, battle uh, battles uh, at the front line remains extremely hard. People continue to die a lot of people unfortunately a lot a lot of ukrainian military and uh, also according to what we hear uh, russian military uh, also they have a lot of uh, quite high number of losses so situation is difficult but again uh, we should expect i think some uh, additional confirmations official confirmations from that area um, in some upcoming days Anna, many thanks. Here is Anna Chanikova, Light for Us in Kyiv. Thanks again. Thank you. And another development, the Russian Foreign Minister, uh, Sergei Lavrov, says he has not heard any new proposals on the Black Sea grain export deal, which is set to expire Monday. The deal, brokered by the United Nations and Turkey last July, aimed to prevent a global food crisis by allowing Ukrainian grain blocked by the conflict to be safely exported. Russia has repeatedly threatened to pull out of the deal unless what it calls obstacles to its own grain and fertilizer exports are lifted. We'll